I think that neuroimaging is an elegant tool. And we still haven't really been able, we're still not able to adequately use this tool as the, the gold standard for diagnosis following brain injury. So most people who sustain a mild TBI still have normal, normal neural imaging. The absence of positive neural imaging findings is, does, is not equivalent to the absence of a brain injury. I really want to emphasize that if you suspect a brain injury, it's really important to get a neuropsychological evaluation done. A neuropsychological evaluation is testing of memory, and judgment, and concentration, uh, reasoning skills, multitasking skills. It's the gold standard for assessing function of the brain. People tend to get MRIs and CT scans done, which are fine, but those are like looking at a blueprint. They tell you structurally, has there been an obvious structural change? But you can't tell looking at a blueprint, for example, if the air conditioning system's working, unless you turn it on and off, you have to test how well it works. Neuropsychological testing tests how well the brain is working, regardless of how nice the blueprint looks. And it's really essential to get a neuropsychological evaluation. What we're looking for is how well the brain functions without distractions. That's the first thing we're looking for. And if the brain is functioning, if the brain is damaged, it's not going to function well with distractions or without distractions. It's a really important issue. If the brain is damaged, you're going to still see something without the distractions. With the distractions, certainly the volume goes up. The second thing, though, in, in many neuropsychological examinations is that you're, you're pushing that person to solve problems for one, two, three hours. And normally, you're going to see fatigue start to kick in. Neuropsychological evaluations are difficult to perform because you have to find somebody with the expertise. They're very expensive, and they take a long time. So you should wait until a period of rapid, spontaneous improvement has passed. In most patients, that's three months, it may be a little bit longer than that, before ordering that evaluation. The proper diagnosis of mild traumatic brain injury should arise from a careful patient history, including documentation of concussion, headache, developmental and psychiatric history, balanced with neurological examination, neuroimaging, and neuropsychological evaluation. The nonspecific nature of mild TBI symptoms as well as their tendency to fluctuate over time may present additional challenges to diagnosis as well as treatment. The effects of mild traumatic brain injury are wide-reaching and every patient is different. What we need to understand is that patients may have symptoms more in the morning, more in the evening. Some patients have symptoms which are stress-related, symptoms that can be brought on at different times of the day. Sometimes they can be diurnal. At one setting, one situation, one um, uh, office visit, they may be doing fairly well. They may be attentive, they may be bright-looking, they may look like they're remembering things fairly well, and the next time they may look much worse. It's important that you track these things over time to watch the fluctuation and not assume that just because they're doing well, everything's going to be better the next time you see them. You have to hang in there with them over time so that you're there to help them when it's not going well with whatever resources and assistance they need and cheerlead for them when it is going well. And more important than any of that is to explain to them that they're going to have fluctuations and this is normal. We've made a lot of headway on mild traumatic brain injury research that this is indeed a real disorder and condition. In cases of mild brain injury, often the issue of malingering comes up, particularly if there's litigation going on or suspicious onset or something like that. My experience is that most of the people I see are not malingering and that malingering is a term that is thrown around way too easy. I have seen people sometimes who will try to make sure I appreciate their, the significance of their symptoms because they can't get anybody to believe them. To me, the, the takeaway is that mild TBI is a serious condition. It's not something that should be discounted. That we need to be very vigilant about trying to find the 15% who continue to suffer. I think if we continue to be vigilant, then we will all be doing our duty. The symptoms of mild traumatic brain injury can be subtle. Patients can present with varying combinations of physical, cognitive, and emotional behavioral symptoms 
that may fluctuate over time. The symptoms of most individuals who sustain a mild TBI or concussion will resolve fairly quickly. However, a significant subset of individuals with mild TBI may experience persistent symptoms. Given the negative impact that mild traumatic brain injury can have on individuals, families, and society as a whole, it is essential to include TBI in the differential diagnosis, particularly when cognitive or personality changes are reported by the individual or family members. A thorough patient history is required in the accurate diagnosis of mild TBI, since current neuroimaging tools may not detect the more common diffuse axonal injuries. Some promising technologies for future clinical or field detection of mild TBI include diffusion tensor imaging, diffusion kurtosis imaging, quantitative MRI, functional MRI, and a portable eye-tracking synchronization device. The ICD-9 code of 854 is generally sufficient for insurance coverage and meeting the eligibility criteria for state brain injury services. Most symptoms will likely improve with the passage of time, the management of symptoms, patient education, and setting up positive expectations for recovery. To that end, primary care medical professionals are invaluable in detecting and diagnosing traumatic brain injuries in the care of their patients.